very good morning and i welcome you all for the parallel technical session 20 hall d and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the chair for today's uh, session engineer satish kumar sharma from rodic consultants and also the co chair will be dr basant raj adhikari from trivon university in nepal and uh, in this session we have this uh, soap lecture by professor gv ramana of iit delhi and uh, after that it is followed by five presentations by various researchers so let me have the pleasure of introducing the chair of this session sri mr satish kumar sharma a chartered civil engineer and alumni of knit sultanpur and iit roorkee is currently working as chief executive officer for messrs roderick consultants private limited new delhi mr sharma has vast experience in planning designing and implementation of mega infrastructure and power project infra and power projects prior to his current tenure he worked in hcc jayprakash associates limited lehmeyar international tata consulting engineers in lead role and he is an expert in hydro power and tunneling technology Mr Sharma is also on various boards and bodies of government of India and actively involved in policy making and standardization it is our good fortune that when we requested him to chair the session he agreed to our request and he is here with us uh, i extend a very hearty welcome to sri sharma on behalf of the organizing committee hearty welcome to you sir thank you thank you excellent and now i have the pleasure of introducing the co chair dr basant raj adhikari he is assistant professor at the department of civil engineering tribhuvan university nepal and he is expertise in is in the area of geo hazard i take this opportunity to extend a very hearty welcome to uh, dr basant raj adhikari hearty welcome to you sir on behalf of the organizing committee thank you thank you very much namaste i also uh, extend a uh, in absentia professor gv ramana a hearty welcome and i also welcome all the presenters in the session uh, a very hearty welcome now i i request the chair and co chair to carry forward this session thank you sir thank you thank you professor dinesh uh, yes uh, you, we have one more request with you sir uh, in the presentation section for students you need to select the best uh, paper award is there sir from this session uh, you can consult the co chair and jointly you can email me which is the best best paper we we have some awards is kept in each session it should be from the student section either a phd color scholar or an mp okay. okay okay thank Please. you thank you professor thank you sir i think in total uh, this session uh, there is one lecture by professor ramanna and i hope he will join in between and then there are five uh, uh, presentations by our students i think the numbering has been given uh, 9058257788690 and 892 i hope all these uh, people are there in the meeting and they will be able to present uh, their case in much better way and definitely you will be able to learn something from uh, this younger generation the people who are actually doing all this research and other things so the first uh, presentation which is going to be there and uh, that's going to be 905 to study if study the impact and bearing ratio of fine grained subgrade using wave tps by mr uh, sailaditya mandal nerula institute of technology india mr mandal are you there yes sir i am there sir please now i think uh, for all participants you can take 15 minutes for your uh, normal presentation and uh, later on we can have a total 15 20 minutes for our discussion please go ahead good morning everyone to everyone uh, a very good morning to everybody present here uh, in the conference and i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my paper here so the paper title is to study the impact on bearing ratio of fine grain subgrade using waste tps and uh, let's start with the introduction so the long term performance of any road reflects the 
approach taken towards its design and its construction. I mean, if the design and construction methodologies are properly adopted, they are good. So we do expect a long-term performance and a better performance. And we also know that a pavement is an arrangement of vertically stacked layers, such as surface courses, base courses, and out of which the subgrade is the lowermost one, and it is the most valued component. And uh, we also know that poor performances or failures in majority of the flexible pavements can be resisted by properly designing an efficient subgrade. So the concept of this modern day soil stabilization and ground improvement techniques is not something very new. It's way back uh, an old practice method in the late 20th century. And we all know that what stabilization can help us achieve in. So it can achieve the best of best results for us if we are at the most stabilized conditions. And that is what soil stabilization can help us in achieving. So numerical, uh, numerous methods of soil stabilization have been widely studied over the last several years by various researchers and uh, using various industrial waste and using various domestic waste, industrial waste such as cement, uh, skin dust and then fly ash and industrial waste, uh, lot, etc. And domestic waste such as um, waste plastic and eggshell and uh, we can also um, say about rice husk ash which is pretty commonly used right now. So basically soil stabilization um, using additives for obtaining greater, greater bearing strength has produced results in which there have been different feedback regarding variations in strength with respect to time of the soil and the additive mixture. So in our present study, uh, we have uh, tried to focus on the point that uh, the environmental issues are currently right now uh, very alarming and uh, it's a serious, uh, it's and poses serious threat to the present as well as the future generations. And we all know that the use of plastic has exponentially increased and its usage uh, is leading to severe disposal problems. So, uh, Basically, in our study, we have been trying to use this material in a different technique to obtain some desirable results. So this is nothing but EPS, that is uh, expanded polystyrene. And these are, all, these are all products made of EPS, as you can see. Um, this is an EPS carp, an EPS geoform. And uh, the maze, most bigger problem with this EPS burning, like if you try to burn it, it uh, tries to elongate into long, thin black shreds which is uh, not contractive in nature, but uh, actually very expanding in nature. So it is not going to reduce into fine dust, but rather going to uh, expel around in the atmosphere. So mm -hmm. an effective method of disposal of waste EPS is required so that we do not further pollute the environment. Because uh, if we do not come to the... Uh, uh, if we do not come to close the operations of using these EPS materials, we will have to think about some methods to dispose them properly other, so that we can save our environment as much as we can. So from literature review, it has been observed that uh, very few research has been contact, uh, con conducted to assess the impact on the CBR value of fine grain soil with an, with an inclusion of EPS. Many researchers have done it. I'll show it in the literature review. Like uh, various researchers have used various materials uh, many have given positive results with uh, time going on and many have got excellent results in the beginning, but with time they've seen degradation in the properties. Many researchers have used um, EPS in the form of uh, layers or in the form of foamy layers uh, in between some soil layers to find out the interactions and uh, which is very much similar in application to the geosynthetic applications and uh, so the objective of the study is to incorporate waste TPS uh, into fine grain soil uh, and study its impact on the CBR value of the soil. So the virgin soil which was collected has been tested for its index, index properties and unsoaked CBR was specifically uh, applied in this particular study. And you must be uh, seeing here that waste TPS has been mixed in soil with varying percentages of 0.05%, 0.1, 0.15. As you might see that the increment of this addition of waste TPS by the dry weight of soil is very small. And I'll explain that later that why is, it, why is this value so small. So uh, the results are compared and an optimum mix of soil uh, and, and the waste TPS has been obtained. So the test materials and the properties uh, are as follows. We can see that our soil for this project was collected from Barakpur Ferry Ghat, Kolkata on the 
side of the river Ganges. Uh, we know that um, alluvial deposits are very much in fine grained in nature. And these are the texture properties that is, it was yellowish gray in color. And uh, as per the ISSCS soil classification system, we found that our soil was classified as silt of intermediate plasticity. We have performed modified proctor compaction tests to obtain the MDD and OMC of the soil. And uh, these are the properties. And as you can see in this particular portion, the clay content, silk content, and sand content, this was obtained by PPIT test. Uh, through PPIT analysis, we have uh, classified our soil. And um, this is the uh, MDD value, and this is the corresponding OMC of the virgin soil. And now our second material, which is to be used in for stabilization is nothing but the polystyrene. Uh, uh, as you can see, styrene after polymerization converts into polystyrene, which is nothing but a very uh, close frame network or a closed chain network. Uh, that means it does signify when it's a closed chain network, it can be hydrophobic in nature. That means uh, water repelling in nature. And since it, uh, it's hydrophobic in nature, it does not react with soil and is non-biodegradable non as well. So with the increase in density of the EPS, its compressive strength increases. And uh, that's what we have tried to utilize the utmost uh, out of this material. EPS has a density of approximately 1% of soil. So that uh, eventually shows that how light this material or how relatively extremely dense, I mean, it's very less dense compared to any other uh, granular material such as soil. So this EPS shows good compressibility and it has high rupture and flexural strength and it's high strength to density um, makes it a very suitable material for being a lightweight fill material. So CBR value of EPS, uh, if you just perform a CBR on an EPS, you will find that its uh, properties is very similar to that of clay soil. Many research has been done on this and uh, it's been observed that as the density of the EPS increases, its compressive strength uh, also increases. That's why making this material a very tougher material as well. So when compressed, this EPS deforms by bending, buckling, besides its excellent mechanical properties, its low density and low permeability makes, its, makes it very suitable for uh, numerous geotechnical, geotechnical applications. So in our work, waste EPS out of cups and plates uh, were used, which was shredded uh, with the help of a mixer at my student's home or, very, or the blenders, you can say, and uh, this Shredded EPS was stored in plastic containers when it when not in use. These were basically passed through 1.18 MMI sieve, and the sample to be uh, performed and the sample to be tested for CBR um, as per the codal provisions has to be passed through a 4.75 MMI sieve. So, uh, thinking about this combination, we thought that there would be a good interaction, and we wanted to see that uh, how could we see some uh, beneficial results in the way. So EPS was incorporated evenly into the soil. It was basically mixed with hand uh, mixing techniques and it was made sure that it is thoroughly mixed out with the entire soil sample during the sample preparation. So I'll come to the results and discussions. Uh, an experimental study has been conducted on the fine grain soil mixed with varied percentages of waste EPS to understand its effect on the CBR value of the soil. And uh, these were the percentages till which we have tested our soil um, with the CBR. And the most important thing is we have performed for just unsoaked conditions on the soil waste EPS mix. And I, if I just miss, why do I tell, tell this as waste EPS? Because after, after utilizing the product, we throw it. So it basically is uh, not reusable again and it is termed as waste EPS. So we basically collected some waste materials and then we at this uh, rather than directly purchasing it from the market and uh, uh, every test was performed in accordance with the indian standard codes and uh, cbr uh, is actually evaluated through this expression so pt by ps where pt is nothing but the load taken by our soil sample which was mixed with the eps uh, with respect to the standard load taken by the standard specimen now the load versus penetration plots for virgin soil and the mix uh, ratios have also been presented later which i'll show you in the, in a moment and it can be observed that uh, 0.05 percent of waste that is uh, when we add our first inculsion of waste eps with the dry weight of soil 
we saw that the value of CBR shooted up to 12%. That is quite a high um, increment in uh, CBR value. And, uh, uh, and this trend was continuously uh, observed till uh, we reached up to 0.25% mix. And uh, the maximum CBR value was actually obtained at this 0.25% of the waste EPS mix. And uh, uh, after 0 0.30, uh, I mean, when we added 0.30% addition, we saw that uh, this value started to decrease. Now, as I was telling that I'd explain this uh, reason for using 0.05, such a small uh, percentage in comparison to other additives, which we do. That is basically because uh, some other additive, um, uh, because of its high density uh, would definitely be this much in quantity. Whereas, as a, I mean, if 1% is this much quantity, my 0.05% of waste EPS is this much quantity because it doesn't want to flock onto each other. So it's basically trying to separate and uh, uh, being an extremely lightweight material, uh, I thought that uh, uh, somewhere, or the, somewhere or the other, we might be able to extract the benefits of this material if mixed into soil. So that's what we did. Uh, and coming uh, to these observations, um, as per the codal provisions, we take the load values at the 2.5 mm penetration and the 5 mm penetration, and then the later values were discarded. But we've observed one interesting thing that in our test, we've continuously observed that the 5 mm penetration corresponding CBR values were always higher than the than those of the 2.5 mm penetrations. And the reason being uh, that whenever you get such type of value, you're recommended to repeat the test so as to check whether there's no problem in the previous test. And we have uh, experimentally uh, repeated each and every test once at least uh, after the main test to to see whether our CBR at 5 is again coming greater than 2.5 or not. And since we got that confirmation that the CBR values at 5M penetration were greater, that is why uh, we decided to use these values as the design CBR values and uh, not as the 2.5, which is generally concerted. And these are the plots for uh, the CBR values for different soil uh, samples with varying percentage of waste EPS mix. If you see the topmost curve, that is the um, sample which could take the highest load uh, corresponding to the penetrations, uh, we could see that this soil plus 0.25% of EPS was showing us very good results. And if you see this particular graph, this makes it more clear where you can observe a pretty high Um, the test sample prepared by mixing fine grain with 0.30% of waste EPS by uh, weight of the soil showed greater difficulty uh, while being placed in the CBR mold. But the test sample with 0.25% uh, showed better packing and significant increase as well. That is what we confirmed from our results. But 0.30, if you ask me personally, it was I could observe that when the rammer was uh, falling on the sample, it was basically trying to pro provide an uplift kind of a thing or uh, probably some swelling taking in the soil sample. So these are always the scopes of such works. And uh, uh, we've also observed that from the virgin soil to this uh, optimum mix of uh, our waste EPS with the soil, we saw that the CBR value has increased uh, by 2.22 times. And if you see this value of increase in CBR, this is quite high when you uh, compare it with other industrial wastes and other domestic wastes. I mean, we generally see 6%, uh, 7%, 8%, 9%. 9%. But here I went up to 15.7%. Uh, Probably uh, this is because uh, of using the unsoaked test, but uh, that comes in the later point. So we basically uh, operated our uh, testing uh, using the unsoaked methodology. And uh, a future scope always lies when we, uh, and uh, it would be extremely criti critical in determining the conditions of a pay payments upgrade when performed for a soaked CBR test, because that would actually be simulate for the worst loading and rainfall events. Okay, so uh, the determination of CBR at uh, values higher or lower, that is the wet, uh, dry side or the wet side of the OMC MDD curve with various percentages of waste EPS with our soil, uh, can also be tested out and that also remains as a limitation of for this experiment performed. 
and if you also see what is the future scope regarding the performance there's tremendous future scope because as we've seen in other soil stabilization and ground improvement techniques that once we get a positive trend then we try to excavate the other results as well so that's what i've tried to do here uh, the tracheal test uh, results the unconfined compressive strength test results and various engineering properties like what are the effects on specific gravity what are the effects on liquid limit and plastic limit everything can be performed on the mixture uh, of soil uh, the soil uh, probably has to be very much similar to my soil and then we can probably directly include the 0.25 percent waste and we could see what characteristics it shows. So the, that's all what we have performed uh, till uh, this particular uh, this particular time. And these are my references. Um, so I finally, think, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mandel. It was a very good presentation. Only just a few things I wanted to know. Uh, yes, when sir. you are talking about 0.25%, that yes. mixing it is by volume or it is by weight? Sir, it is by weight, sir. So now the moment you are talking about it is by weight and you are whether you have considered what will be in entire process, what will be the uh, labor cost and material cost and uh, other things are going to be there? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, if I could just explain, if, uh, if I have uh, this uh, section of a roadway, so where I want to particularly uh, mix this uh, component, uh, and uh, not pollute the other areas so that stays confined in that particular place and uh, if i could just probably do a prototype setup and uh, perform this uh, similar uh, i mean whatever your suggestion is uh, i think uh, this would uh, really give interesting results and it is something to uh, be uh, aware of so and with 36 percent clay content what was your cvr originally um, originally, sir, it was uh, roughly around six percent something. Uh, I mean, it showed uh, it was a uh, it was good. It, it showed good results. I mean, the soil was. Problem is, if suppose we want to complete a stretch of say hundred kilometer or fifty kilometer in any of the uh, area. Yes. So getting this much bulk volume of this, what you are EPS, you are talking. Yes, sir where we don't have any segregation. Even today, whatever waste we are collecting in yes, more sir. than 85%, I'm talking about in our country, yes. in more than 85% cases, our municipal waste is still not segregated. Yes, sir. So getting this material, which we are considering that it will be a free of cost, particularly in this type of reach. Yes, sir. Whether you whether you feel it will be easily available, uh, sir. Uh, I've always been motivated uh, seeing the uh, researchers and the research being done abroad. That's okay. I, I mean, okay. I, my only my only suggestion is it's wonderful work has been done until and unless you are not going to test anything, look into that. You are not going to take it up to laboratory. You will not be able to know what is happening. But yes. any test or any research and development, whatever is being done. We have always keep in our mind, this is just a learning process. Yes, sir. We have always to keep in our mind that whatever we are doing in the laboratory, how actually it is going to be transformed into the industry on the ground. Absolutely. And what are the implications related to that? Only then, till then only our industry and our laboratory, R&D departments, are your work, research development work, whatever is being done there in the laboratory, they are going to be correlated. Absolutely, sir. Surely, sir. Take care. It was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank sir, you. I'm going to expand more on this and I'm going to surely uh, try to find one solution one day. Hopefully, sir. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, we, a lot of expectations are there for uh, young people like you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mandar. I think, uh, Mr. Uh, Adhikari, we can go for next participant. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next participant uh, uh, is, I'm not sure he or she is there. So instability of silty sands under partially drained conditions by Sital Gujarati, Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, India. So I don't think uh, the presenter is there. Okay. So I'll, I'll move another presentation. So. 
by Anant Aishwarya Dube from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, India, to present investigating the potential of Santan Gom for alien erosion mitigation. You have 15 minutes. Please proceed. So I am going to present here uh, the potential of a biopolymer named Jantan Gum for aeolian erosion mitigation. Uh, this problem is very near to me because um, I have uh, been living in Rajasthan for uh, more than two decades. My father is in electricity department and we were being transferred every two years to desert areas. And I have seen these problems, what these can cause. So as you can see uh, on my first phase uh, that uh, there is this sand storm is going on. And uh, before starting my presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, my supervisors. So I am a, a collaborative PhD student at uh, IIT Guwahati and Pertin University. And this project is supervised by Dr. K. Ravi at IIT Guwahati and Professor Abhijit Mukherjee and Dr. Navdeep K. Dhami at Curtin University. So uh, for the aeolian erosion or desert erosion, what happens the high wind velocity and the particular range is up to 45 km per hour until it is a storm. Uh, the uh, erosion is triggered by detachment of the particle as it can be seen here. And then with entrainment, transport and deposition, the uh, erosion uh, gets severe. So uh, there are many problems with it. It's not just uh, a temporary interruption in uh, a living uh, lifestyle. It is uh, more than that. Uh, in 2018, for example, 27 people were dead. And this is not due to direct impact of the sandstorm. What happens that the regular infrastructure like transportation, electricity, communication line, everything gets disturbed with it. And uh, what happens that these sandstorms specifically create nuisance on the road, and that's why uh, accident occurs. Uh, there are several uh, solutions which are uh, in practice for desert erosion mitigation. The most common is the water spraying, e.g. accessible. The problem is that in desert area, uh, water is uh, very, uh, water is in very limited uh, amount, so spraying is not that feasible. Moreover, uh, what happens that once you spray the water, uh, once it is uh, after drying uh, the uh, sand or soil, it, uh, it comes to the regular state and it is erodible again. And we have also shown this in our experiment. Uh, and uh, another possible solution is cement. But with cement, the problem is that the water retention, which is very poor in these areas, it goes worse. Uh, the problem with water recharge and eco suitability is always there. Other chemical grouts are either hyperalkaline, for example, lime, which can be toxic to environment. And uh, therefore, in recent times, sustainable technologies have been emerging. Uh, when I say sustainable, it doesn't only mean that it should be eco-friendly. There are many other aspects of it, for example, durability and uh, uh, durability and cost effectiveness. It should not be very uh, higher at cost if it is eco-friendly because that won't be uh, accessible then to regular people. Considering this, uh, biopolymer is nowadays uh, a lot in uh, a lot in uh, a lot in trend in the research. Uh, there are few studies with it uh, which have already been done in terms of soil strength improvement as well as the uh, wind erosion control. So uh, I'll talk about them and then their limitation, and then I'll go to uh, our uh, what we are presenting today. So uh, Lee et al. and Ramachandran et al. they have done UCS tests by mixing zero to two percent Janthan gum uh, in uh, so, uh, soil columns, and they have seen strength up to five MPa, which is like a soft wall. Uh, continuing uh, this, they, these are recent research, but before this, there are few practices for wind erosion control by Kawajin Jan and uh, Chen et al. and Aladdin, where they have shown that the uh, wind erosion is getting mitigated with the application of Jantan gum sprays. The problem is that uh, they haven't mentioned the actual range where the uh, erosion initiates. So TDV, that means a threshold detachment velocity, is the velocity at which particle starts to move. And since it is a it is a very important parameter because uh, according to that the dosage of biopolymer can be decided. 
so seeing all this limitation uh, we conducted our tests in a small wind tunnel uh, it is a, a manufactured wind tunnel in which the soil samples are kept and the uh, uh, motorized fan can be controlled for its speed there is a digital anemometer placed just above the soil sample to um, uh, to measure the actual wind velocity so uh, we collected the soil from uh, thar desert rajasthan uh, specifically from jaisalmer uh, district and uh, these are the properties it is a poorly graded sand with less than 5% of fine content in it uh, and the results showed that the threshold det detachment velocity for the untreated sand which is shown here by zero was around 20 kmph and when we introduced a little only 0.125 gram per liter of xanthan gum it improved more than 200% it is to be noted that in these areas there is another common practice of mixing sugar with water but uh, that is not found that suitable uh, for the erosion mitigation then when we went we found optimum crust thickness as well as threshold detachment velocity at 0.25 gram per liter of concentration and after that the the, uh, the crust thickness decreased it was mostly because when we mix xanthan gum with water it becomes viscous so after a concentration uh, the permeation of the xanthan uh, gum sprays to soil becomes difficult these are the soil mass loss Uh, along with the crust thickness uh, in the wind tunnel uh, these uh, uh, these uh, tests uh, these uh, results are at 45 km per hour velocity uh, and uh, the exposure was for uh, 15 to 30 minutes so as you can see that uh, uh, the green line shows the uh, mass loss and under the exposure of wind and uh, and in 0.125 gram per liter also we found some detachment some loss of mass but it completely ceased at 0.25 gram per liter uh, these are the uh, macroscopic and microscopic images what happens with the uh, this is the pure sand which is loose in uh, loose and uh, smooth in nature once it is uh, once the biopolymer is applied they are combined and joined together by the action of biopolymer and a thick crust is observed we observed up to 3.5 mm of crust uh, which can be uh, developed with these xanthan gum sprays uh, the major conclusion from this study is that uh, 0.125 uh, to 2% xanthan gum solution in this range uh, which is a suitable range 0.25% of xanthan gum treatment is optimum and it can develop develop a crust up to 2 cm and it can mitigate soil erosion up to 45 km per hour Uh, this study also demonstrated that uh, increase of uh, xanthan gum does not only uh, mean that in, it will increase the wind uh, wind erosion resistance uh, resistance as it is shown in the ucs test there they claim that increasing biopolymer content im improves the strength uh, accordingly but that do doesn't happen in the case of wind erosion test uh, there are there are few limitation in future scope again uh, with this Uh, that uh, this test was not done on a long term influence where seasonal variation can occur so we are seeking uh, for a field trial and will be soon doing it uh, the soil strength of xanthan gum uh, treated uh, sample is are also reported to lose 50% of its strength with only one wetting and drying cycle so that means that xanthan gum since it is hydrophilic in nature after one ex exposure to rain it won't be that effective uh that uh brings us that it might be uh, suitable for a short term application but formidable for long term application but that's fine because we don't want to completely uh change the morphology of uh, aeolian uh, landforms uh we want it to change accordingly we want it to be uh, uh, targeted for a sensitive zone for some time and then uh, once it uh, like one sandstorm is over if it degrades it's well and fine uh other uh, hydrophilic in situ sprayable biopolymers are also there like guar gum or there are some indian gums which we would like to try for this erosion control practices in future this is uh, there are some important references here uh, first one is from the newspaper where the uh, mortalities of 27 people have been reported then these are some other uh, tests and we have extended our study to biocement also 
So these are two other publications which we recently published, uh, including biosiemens and biopolymer. And in the second study, we have used a uh, bacteria which have been isolated from the soil, and we have employed it for wind erosion control. Thank you for your time. Uh, I really appreciate your patience with this. Any questions? <laughs> Mr. Anand, it's not a question, just I wanted to understand. It's a wonderful task you people are doing. One thing you tell me, yes, normally when you are using the, this Janathan gum, yes, sir. this is a soluble compound. Uh, yes, sir. So when you are going to use this soluble compound, normally when this, I don't know, you will be knowing in better way, when this soluble compound you are going to mix with some part of the layer, say three inches, four inches on top layer of the sand. Yes, sir. You are going to keep it there. Yes, and sir. what happens normally along with these terms, mm -hmm. there is always a follow-up. Later on, many a times it is a follow-up that some spray of water also takes place. Yes, sir. Some light rain also takes place. What yes, will be the effectiveness of that layer which you have prepared at that time? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that is the limitation. That's what we are saying with this, that biopolymer is a better candidate than water alone. Because once sprayed water is gone, it is uh, it is just like untreated water. Another but thing is, another thing is, even if the temperature is very high, Mm -hmm. okay. Forget about the water. Even temperature is very high. Even at that time, this XJ behavior it reduces, reduces its uh, I think bonding strength. Uh, no, no. At higher strength, the uh, str at higher, at higher temperatures, the strengths are reported to be really high. Uh, there are some studies which have cured it at 60 degrees centigrade. Uh, and then they have reported double the strength on the uh, uh, compared to the normal temperature. Okay, so normally when you are going to spray, normally you uh, use a spray gun or any uh, equipment you are going to use. We right? used a hand spray. So hand spray you can Simple do in very spray. limited area when we are talking. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so the plan is for uh, the next step for us is that we want to do it in a field area. Uh, probably and with a machine. Uh, uh, this was a lab test and we did it only uh, for a one meter square and 0.6 meter square uh, uh, samples. So that's why we used a uh, hand spray. I think it's a good approach. You people are proceeding in the right direction and I'm sure in days to come, once you are succeeding, a lot of problem, especially in uh, digits will be sorted out. Only thing we have to look that it should be uh, whatever technology or whatever the mechanism is going to be evolved, it is going to be user friendly and cheap in rate. Yes, sir. There is another thing which I would like to add that we have done some rough calculation and uh, Janthan gum costs around uh, 1000 to 4000 rupees depending on the quality per kg. But our method, only 4 gram Janthan gum is required for 1 meter square of area with 16 liter of water that means that we can do 1000 meter square of area only with uh, we can do 16000 meter square area only with 1 kg of soil uh, 1 kg of janthan gum sorry so with 4000 it is very cheap it is very cheap uh, that's what i meant to say okay great 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 i think uh... Dr. Adhikari, we can move for next candidate. Only one thing, okay. sir. One, I have you. one Thank clarification. You, Hello? Yeah. Yes, Thank please, you. Professor Dinesh. Yeah, Anant, this, uh, how it works when uh, you, you say, said something about when it is saturated, efficiency comes down by 50 or something like that you were saying? Yes, yes. Once now, uh, yeah. there is one wetting drying cycle, the strength has been reported to like uh, reduce to half. The strength is okay, but erosion rate? What yeah, ero the, erosion the, rate, uh, uh, I haven't shown that data because that is we are doing, but we have found out that once uh, the water interacts with the Jensen gum treated soil again, uh, it, it loses significantly. We have found that uh, there is reduction of 25% in the 
uh, soil uh, like the TDV and the soil mass loss also improves uh, drastically with the uh, wetting drying cycle. So durability is uh, one of the concern of Genton Group. That's why uh, we are also exploring another method named biocement. Uh, where we are precipitating calcite by same spraying method. That is a costly technique when compared to this. This is a very cheaper technique, and uh, this is mostly for the, uh, we intended mostly for the village people, where they can, instead of mixing, you know, spraying water or mixing uh, uh, sugar, they can use this. So we want to uh, kind of uh, popularize this technique within that context. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. So, thank you, uh, uh, Anantaji, for your uh, wonderful presentation, and wish you good luck for your uh, further studies, which are really important for the you know the people who are living nearby desert. And this is also contribution to the science. And as uh, already uh, Satishar mentioned, that we need to you know go for industry from laboratory, which is very very important. And and these kind of things are lacking in our country. So thank you, congratulations once again. Now I'll move to another presentation by uh, Badijar uh, Siddha Ganga, sorry, Mohan Badijar from Siddha Ganga Institute of Technology, Tumakuru, India, uh, to present performance of pavement sections constructed using RAP with GeoCell as reinforcement. Please proceed, you have 15 minutes to go. Very good morning, sir. Thanks for the organizers for uh, providing me an opportunity to share my research work. Today I'm here to, I'm Mohan Badger, a research scholar in the Department of Civil Engineering, Siddhanga Institute of Technology, Tumkur. Today I'm here to present my uh, presentation on my research article. Uh, my paper titled, Performance of Payment Sections Constructed Using RAP with GeoCell as Reinforcement. <laughs> These are the contents of my presentation. Introduction, materials used, payment design and test setup, construction of model payment sections, repeated load test procedure, result and discussions, and lastly, conclusions. Coming to the introduction part, in the recent years, due to uh, increased infrastructural demand, the construction activities are consuming a huge quantity of virgin aggregates, especially in payment industry. The natural uh, resources are on the verge of depletion created an alarming situation for the engineers to seek for an alternative sustainable solution. On the other hand, a huge quantity of RAP recycled, reclaimed asphalt pavement is produced during the reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads. Uh, the disposal of these waste is of major concern as they consume uh, huge, uh, huge uh, disposal locations. In addition, uh, subgrades on black cotton soil, uh, we can say expansive soils, uh, uh, the construction of roads on these type of roads are problematic because of their high swelling and uh, shrinkage characteristics. To minimize these problems, uh, whenever uh, in, uh, during payment construction, if uh, expansive soil encounters, there is, a, there is a possibility of the thickness of the road section needs to be increased or the uh, other uh, uh, good quality material needs to be used to enhance or otherwise we, we will go for stabilization or uh, we may use some other any suitable technique to improve the uh, strength of the uh, subgrade soil. In the recent years, geosynthetics are being effectively used in various construction practices. Among the uh, various types of geosynthetics, geogrids and geocells are used in payment industry. Uh, several studies in the past have shown that geosynthetics can extend the service life of the payments reduce the base course thickness for a given service life, and uh, <coughs> they will uh, delay the rating development. Uh, in our study, we have made an attempt to assess the payment performance using uh, recycled asphalt payment with GSL as reinforcement. We are using recycled asphalt payment uh, in our payment, which is uh, discarded uh, waste material, construction and demolition waste. The various materials used in the study are, there are three types of soils. Uh, there are three types of soils are used in the study. Sir, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, no, yes, yes, perfect. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to know whether I'm audible or not. Uh, subgrade is used for the, uh, sorry, black cotton soil is used for the construction of subgrade. 
uh, which is having a, a low CBR value, a lesser uh, so-called CBR value, which forms a weak subgrade. Uh, and uh, IRC SP 72 recommends uh, 100 mm improved subgrade over the weak subgrade. For that, we have used another soil, uh, which is having a, uh, the criteria is, uh, we, the soil should have a so-called CBR value greater than 10%. We have used uh, a soil which is having so called CBR value of 14%. And, uh, and there, for unfaved surface layer, uh, they have uh, mentioned the uh, sacrificial layer, uh, which is of uh, 100 mm thickness. We used unf uh, unfaved, uh, surface, uh, unfaved surfacing in the study. Uh, the only criteria is the soil should have 30% uh, gravel. So, uh, grain size distribution curves of the soils are shown in the figure. And the bottom figure shows the gradation, which is for the sacrificial layer. The soil uh, meets the requirements of the MOD, Ministry of Rural Development 2014. Next. Uh, aggregates. Aggregates are used for the uh, conventional base mix to prepare the mix of conventional base mix. And the various uh, aggregate properties were uh, carried out as per the IS2386 standards. Uh, from the table, it is observed that all the aggregate properties are acceptable. And uh, compaction and strength properties of the design base mix. Uh, design mix, base mix possesses a maximum dry unit weight of 22.13 and OMC of 6%. It has a soaked CBR value of 65%. Uh, this is the uh, gradation curve. MOD, uh, Ministry of Rural Development 2014, recommends three gradings for the base mix, grading A, B, and C. We have chosen grading A of the MOD 2014. Uh, the figure shows the uh, dotted line indicates the uh, obtained uh, design mix and uh, uh, bottom will be the upper limit and lower will be the lower uh, lower line will be the lower limit of the uh, as mentioned in the mod 2014 the design mix uh, meets the requirements of the uh, mod 2014 grading a of the mod 2014 uh, the material and the material used in the study is uh, recycled asphalt pavement which is uh, uh, construction and demolition waste, which is <coughs> dumped in uh, dumped as a waste uh, uh, at the either side of the roads. We use that material in our uh, uh, base mix uh, in the present study. Uh, first figure shows the wrap in its original form, and second one is the processed wrap, which is uh, processed using a jack crusher. Here uh, we have got 20 down uh, 20 down size wrap fraction. Uh, by using jack crusher and uh, rest of the uh, coarser grained uh, sizes like 40 mm were prepared manually using uh, uh, manually uh, we have prepared and that mix was used for the base mix the properties of the wrap aggregates and uh, wrap initially recycled asphalt pavement has a uh, uh, subjected to fractional distillation and uh, bitumen content was uh, determined it has a bitumen content of four percent and the aggregates are subjected to some uh, uh, specific gravity and uh, modified compaction was tested and CBR value is tested. It uh, possesses a CBR value of 30% and uh, maximum dry unit weight of 19.81 and OMC of 5.62. The reinforcement material used is a geocell. Geocell of aspect ratio 0.67 was used in the study uh, because uh, from the literature it is, uh, uh, it, it is observed that uh, the geocell of aspect ratio having 0 0.67 to 1 will contribute to maximum benefits in terms of uh, reduced plastic deformation and increased payment performance. So in this study, we have used the aspect ratio 0 0.67. The various uh, properties of geocell were uh, shown in the table. It has a cell depth of 150 mm, well spacing of 350. Uh, the various properties are shown in the table. Payment design and setup. Uh, payment design was carried out uh, according to IRC SP 72 2015 guidelines. For a CBR value of less than 2% and a cumulative ESL of 10,000 to 30,000 reputations, uh, IRC recommends a weak subgrade followed by 100 mm improved subgrade and 200 mm base course. On that, we have unpaired surfacing of 50 mm. Uh, since the study involves the geocell reinforcement, we have excluded uh, improved subgrade in case of reinforced section. The figure shows the uh, typical cross section of the unreinforced and reinforced model payment sections. Uh, 
coming to the introduction, uh, sorry, construction of the model permanent uh, sections. This is the steel tank, which is of size two meter width, two meter length, and uh, depth of two meter. Uh, he, this tank is used for the construction of model permanent. Uh, hammer is used for the compaction of uh, uh, subgrade. And uh, we have vibratory plate compactor to compact the base coarse granular material. Uh, the bottom uh, in the bottom row we have first image which is of uh, construction of weak subgrade which is of uh, 300 mm and on either side we have uh, laid a, a sand which is compacted to a relative density of 80 percent to simulate the shoulder and uh, we have 100 mm thick include subgrade over the uh, weak subgrade we have compacted and over that in case of unreinforced section we have laid directly base course uh, when it is a reinforced condition uh, over the uh, weak subgrade, we will place a geo cell, which is perfectly positioned using the strikes, stretched and positioned using strikes. And then over that, we will fill the, uh, in that infill material is used is wrap. At the bottom portion, uh, to ensure the density, we will compact it using the tamping rods. And uh, after that, uh, we will uh, lay the complete uh, wrap material up to 200 mm thickness and using a uh, vibratory plate compactor we have compacted. And uh, sacrificial layer, this is unpaired surfacing. Uh, the last figure shows the experimental setup. Here uh, we have placed a steel plate at the bottom and uh, steel column was used to uh, uh, enable the loading uh, through hydro hydraulic jack. And uh, at the four corners, we have fixed dial gauges at the center due to loading the settlement will be recorded and at 30 and 40 centimeter we have placed another tool dial gauges to know the surface flow. repeated load procedure uh, test was assembled as per is uh, is guidelines and uh, a square a square steel plate was placed at the center of the prepared base and uh, to transfer the load a steel column was used a seating load of uh, 7 kg per centimeter square was applied with respect to area of the plate uh, a total of uh, 50.4 kilonewton load was peak load was considered and the test was terminated uh, at after 500 loading cycles the readings were taken after uh, dial readings were taken after loading unloading and after 20 seconds of rest speed this is haver sign uh, loading pattern uh, coming to the result and discussion part uh, the figure shows the uh, comparison of total deformation of unreinforced and uh, geocell reinforced such sections in unreinforced section, the blue line indicates the uh, unreinforced uh, total deformation of the unreinforced section, and uh, the bottom line will, will be the reinforced condition. Here, uh, total settlement was around 28 mm in both the cases. Uh, this uh, section will be reinforced wrap, GSL reinforced wrap. Uh, one, one more is unreinforced section, which is our conventional mix. Uh, initially, we can say up to 20 cycles, uh, there is a sudden increase in the settlement. From 20 to uh, 200, there is a transitional behavior in the settlement. After that, there is a gradual increase in a settlement with number of loading cycles. Next, uh, plastic deformation. Here, the, the total plastic de deformation observed is 26 mm. Uh, we can say up to total deformation was 27 and plastic deformation was 26. More than 90 to 95 percent of the total deformation constitutes plastic deformation. Only uh, 1.2 mm that is around uh, roughly count for 5 percent of the total deformation will be elastic here also the same trend is observed as observed in case of uh, total deformation uh, this will be uh, the elastic deformation observed in case of unreinforced and reinforced sections here uh, there is no such significant changes were observed due to the geocell confinement geocell reinforcement uh, the surface for files at the end of 500 loading cycles. Uh, the these uh, readings were obtained uh, by uh, counting the dial uh, uh, settlement of the dial gauges. Uh, here uh, we have uh, uh, we have shown plate width b by <coughs> the plate width b by three here. It is uh, 15 plus 15 30 centimeter. Uh, the settlement at the loading point is observed to be 27 mm in uh, almost same in both the cases. But in uh, cell uh, reinforced section, the settlement at 30 and 40 centimeter is negligible compared to the unreinforced section. So this uh, reduction in settlement at 30 and 40 centimeter will leads to the good riding quality. Uh, 
conclusions drawn from the study are the use of RAF as a filler in the GeoCell reinforced layer uh, is providing the same performance as uh, conventional suction. Uh, here, uh, both in terms of plastic and deformation, it will provide same contribution. The provision of GeoCell reinforced pavement layer acts as a residuum at the uh, at the center of the subgrade and base and reduce the lateral flow of the granular layer. The study has shown that possibility of reduction in uh, pavement thickness. Uh, in case of RAF uh, filled GeoCell reinforced layers in granular base layer compared to the conventional pavement sections on weak subgrade. The uh, use of RAP in the payment section has addressed the issue of RAP disposal and preservation of natural aggregates and helps in building the sustainable payments. Uh, these are the references used in the study. Can you just question. go to your previous cycle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just previous cycle. You have not mentioned the scale when you are talking about the deformation. Sir, uh, deformation. Whatever central scale you are giving. Yes, sir. If I see that one, what it is showing that there is a difference of three millimeter only between that uh, at top, tell me between zero to five. Yes, sir. Sir, zero to five value? at uh, 30 centimeter from the loading point. Okay. From the loading point, it is around, uh, <coughs> we have around 2.5 mm here and 2 mm here, sir. So if I under if stand correctly, yes, sir. What was your loading diameter? Sir, loading diameter is here, sir. 15 centimeter and 15 centimeter. Actually, uh, square steel plate was used for the loading, sir. So it was 15 centimeter? Uh, it is having a width of 30 centimeter. On either side, I have to 15 centimeter and 15 centimeter. So this dots, bottom dots, whatever you are showing, that is the 15 centimeter and 15 centimeter. Am I right? Sir, total width of the plate is 30 centimeter, sir. So okay. on either side, I have chosen, taken 15 and 15, just to simulate the wheel load, sir. Okay, that's okay. I think uh, always the position, the deformation, whatever you are getting in a confined condition, it will be entirely different when you are going to be there in field. Yes, and sir. by this graph, if I can understand correctly, the moment you are moving beyond 30 centimeter, which is yes, the size of your plate, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only then deformation you are able to see that there is a uh, variation when you are going to use uh, RE and when you are yes, going to. I don't think in this entire process, uh, RAP is going to play any important role because in this setup, confined uh, testing, even yes, your sir. normal material will also be giving the same behavior what you are RAP you are giving. Basically, sir. you make these two things altogether. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It would have been prudent if you would have drawn a uh, result by virtue of which it was showing that if suppose you are not going to use the rep, what would be the condition? Okay, sir. Okay. One thing just uh, for your information, today yes, in industry, yes, even uh, NHI, even uh, our uh, transport ministry, they very much they permit and they rather than they promote to use the reclaimed material. Yes, sir. Very much they are permitting, only not only from environment viewpoint, because it is going to make your entire construction cheaper. Yes, sir. Okay. And once you are using that material carefully, utilizing whatever the desired, uh, what you call that uh, asphalt or bitumen you are going to utilize, this is as good as your original uh, pavement whatever you are designing yes sir okay so it yes, will sir. be more prudent if you can add a cycle and it will show that actually if suppose you are going to use normal uh, rep or normal material what will be the difference then it will be the research will be more prudent undoubtedly yes, industry is using everywhere yes, they are using and this uh, Geo reinforcement, they are being used in many of the roads where the material is going to be a challenge. Yes, sir. It's a good work done. Really, you are proceeding in the right direction, and the moment you will be able to give more and more results, probably it will be more useful for users who are there in industry. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, right now we are working on uh, recycled materials, uh, like including construction and demolition, yes, sir, RCA and RAP. And also, we are uh, using uh, waste tires also in payment construction. A lot of research already has taken in this field. 
Yes, sir. Yes, I think sir. once you go, you have to move one step above that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then it will be useful for the people, for the youth. We'll, uh, we'll take your suggestions positive, sir. Good Definitely. Moment. You had a good presentation. Very yes, effective, sir. very timely managed. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Adhikari sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, sir. There's a, there are two questions uh, uh, for uh, him, uh, for Mohan. So one yes, from Shravan Kumar asking, what are the different techniques available to feel and compact the material in geocell pockets? Sir, uh, in our uh, study, we have compacted using uh, at the bottom side, bottom of the geocell, we have compacted it by manually. Okay. But uh, when, when it comes to fill, we have to completely uh, fill the material and we have a cover of 50 mm over that. Then by normally uh, uh, vibrate roller is uh, sufficient to compact the materials. And then okay. I, I can show that uh, that uh, geocell walls, whatever the walls they have uh, used in the geocell material, they are uh, having a strength of to withstand that vibratory compactor. Okay, so thank you. Another question uh, from uh, Siladitya. Is the two by two by two cubic meter tank dimension for as per some codal provision or is it a non-conventional setup? Uh, it is not a conventional setup. And then uh, we can say we have a reaction, uh, sorry, we have a steel frame uh, within the, I will just go through the image. Said uh, to enable the pavement uh, construction inside the tank, the uh, pavement section is only one meter and one meter size, one meter square size. Okay. We have a steel frame for that. Uh, in in uh, right now, we have increased the section to 1.5 meter and 1.5 meter because of the confinement. Uh, we are not recording. Uh, we have uh, some uh, problem with the surface profiles to measure the deformation using dial gauges. That is why we have increased. It is non-conventional, sir. There is no such uh, uh, codal provisions for this. The assembly was done as per uh, plate load test setup, sir. This uh, same as a uh, plate load set test setup. Okay, yeah, uh, wonderful, wonderful presentation. And as uh, Satish sir already mentioned, that I think uh, there are uh, you know lots of studies have already taken place uh, in this area, and uh, many people have done very fantastic research using a very you know high tech research using different. Uh, new technology with the different uh, numerical calculations and simulations uh, based on physical model uh, that I think uh, the work what you and your colleagues are doing can be extended to the you know to the better uh, way uh, to the you know and a possible you know high scale with the high precision so that users uh, can use very effectively with the low cost. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, once you, sir. Again. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you, can you close thank your you, screen here? So I think we don't have other uh, presenter here. I don't see in the list. Uh, do we have uh, Professor Ramana? Uh, Professor Ramana, sir, there is a medical emergency with him. So he will not be presenting. That is the information we have. Mm. And now the organizers have requested all the participants to join to Hall C, where there is one more lecture is going on. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Satish sir, please conclude. I think it was uh, all the three presentations, whatever has been done, it's really a good learning. These people are, I'm very happy, at least these people are working in that direction where they can really, they can contribute something, something to society, real industry. And uh, definitely, whatever has been discussed, I hope they will be including in their further uh, research, further work, and they will come up with a uh, solution to the problem for which they are doing their hard work. And it will definitely be helpful. With these words, I would like to thank Professor Dinesh, Professor Adhikari, and uh, all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks to everybody. It was uh, really a pleasure. You.
Thank you, yeah. sir. Sir, uh, uh, we have come to the end of this uh, technical session number 20, and uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Sri Satish Kumar Sharma, sir, and also Basant Raj Adhikari uh, for successfully conducting this uh, technical session. We have come to the end of this, and uh, the participants are requested to join for Hall C where one more invited lecture is going on. Today, we, we miss Ramana's presentation and some medical emergency in his family. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you. And finally, sir, uh, Satish sir and Adhikari sir, you need to choose one. Uh, yeah, we'll give, for... we'll give, we'll give. I think yeah. you can send Actually, all the three you. participants, they were very good. And they have- No, one, actually, sir, one participant no, you, is you to student. Share with me through email, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. First, first thing is, one yeah. participant is not a student. He's a faculty, right? Faculty are not uh, permitted, sir. Only students. PhD scholars yeah, are MTech yeah. students. So That's we have good. only two, two students for today. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thanks, everybody. Sir.